All right, well, Michael Cohen is speaking out. President Donald Trump's former personal lawyer is testifying publicly before members of the House Oversight Committee. Cohen pleaded guilty to lying to Congress in November and was sentenced to three years in prison. And he did not hold back when it came to his thoughts about President Trump. Take a listen. I am ashamed because I know what Mr. Trump is. He is a racist, he is a con man, and he is a cheat. Well, there you go. In his words, Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman joins us now to discuss this. Rick, you were watching this unfold. What did you, what did you make of the opening remarks and what happened afterwards? It was hard tearing myself away. It's still ongoing to be here, so uh, I have to get right back as soon as I'm done. <laughs> it's gripping. Uh, first of all, it's fascinating. We're getting a really unprecedented glimpse into how Trump operates. Uh, so I t I put the theater aside for a minute. I'm, I'll try to address what I think are important takeaways. Mm -hmm. First, uh, he, d he does not have uh, any evidence uh, that he has seen Trump involved with Russians, cooperating with Russians, colluding, if you prefer that word, with Russians. And of course, he was asked about that. Are you aware that President Trump has, you know, do you have any direct uh, knowledge of Trump's involvement with Russians? He basically said no. He can speculate, blah, 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 but he basically said, no, I don't. And then there's this other question of, uh, you know, one of the things he has pled guilty to that he will be going to jail for is lying to Congress in prior testimony. And he basically lied about the Trump organization's involvement with a Russia project. He gave false information about a timeline on that. Mm -hmm. So there there was a BuzzFeed story in January that said uh, President Trump actually instructed Michael Cohen to lie, and he said that is not true. He said, uh, no, he did not instruct me to lie. Uh, he said his lawyers knew what I was going to say before Congress, so there was, he kind of implied there was this wink and nod, we know you're going to lie, and that's fine with us, but nobody told him to do it, and, uh, including President a Trump. Fine line so, uh, so that's uh, sort of uh, good for President Trump, I guess. But I think there are some other uh, revelations here that are not so good for President Trump. Uh, and I'll tick through those real quickly. First of all, more evidence that Trump clearly was directly involved in the $130,000 uh, hush payment to Stormy Daniels. Uh, uh, Cohen has pled guilty to a campaign finance felony with regard to that payment. That's one of the four things he's going to jail for. Uh, and Trump apparently uh, knew everything about it and approved of it in real time, which means Trump would uh, be complicit in the same well, crime. You, you mentioned that. And we have, I think we have a clip of him mentioning that earlier today. Let's take a listen to that. I am providing a copy of a $35,000 check that President Trump personally signed from his personal bank account on August 1st of 2017. When he was President of the United States, pursuant to the cover-up, the President of the United States thus wrote a personal check for the payment of hush money as part of a criminal scheme to violate campaign finance laws. So that check is now public. There's another one that is actually not signed by President Trump, but according to Michael Cohen, is signed by Alan Weisselberg, who was the CFO and still is the CFO of the Trump Organization, and by Donald Trump Jr. Now, these checks don't say hush money, uh, reimbursement, Stormy <laughs> Daniels on them. Um, <laughs> but Cohen story, is saying yeah, that was that. the purpose of the checks. Uh, and there, there are some other things in here that are fairly damning for Trump and will mm -hmm. cause problems for him in the future. For what it's worth, Republicans uh, have basically been making the case that, look, you are a convicted felon heading to prison. Uh, one of the things you're going to prison for is lying to Congress. Why should we believe you now? That's so of, yeah, I mean, they, are not, was... they are not defending Trump at all on any substance. They are just attacking Cohen's character. But that was uh, obviously a route they were going to take. And President Trump echoing that as well. He tweeted earlier about Cohen, writing, Michael Cohen was one of many lawyers who represented me, unfortunately. He had other clients also. He was just disbarred by the state Supreme Court for lying fraud. He did bad things unrelated to Trump. I always like when he uses third person. He is lying in order to reduce his prison time using Crooked's lawyer. <laughs> well, uh, Trump's sort of statements of fact in that tweet are actually correct. He mm -hmm. was disbarred in the state of New York. Uh, he is going to prison. Uh, everybody knows that. I mean, uh, Cohen, Michael Cohen, for his own part, uh, so one of the um, members of Congress on the, on the committee said, uh, how do you describe yourself? And he said very quickly, without thinking much about it, a fool. Mm -hmm. And he has basically uh, characterized himself as Trump, somebody who is just enthralled to Trump, 
Uh, he said, you know, you felt like you were big, part of something bigger when you were around Trump. Uh, and he said, this is the way everybody around him operates. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you go back to the, this, you know, the analogy that some people like of the mafia, you know, like getting a key consigliere to tell you what it's like uh, serving the Don, uh, that's kind of what this the hearing Don, feels the Don. like. Yeah. And I will, I will say that um, Cohen has actually held up pretty well. I mean, uh, Republicans have really tried to bring him down. Mm -hmm. He's been animated. Uh, he's, I think he's been fairly persuasive. Uh, he has been contrite. Uh, and it just honestly makes for gripping theater. And Facebook, yeah, you can call threats. Definitely too. gripping theater. I mean, the whole country is watching. This is the most important event happening live right now in the United States. And the one man who has a link to this is out of the country. In yeah. Vietnam, I don't think that's a coincidence. Uh, I think President Trump definitely wanted to try to steer the media narrative away from what's going on with Michael Cohen. But this is really giving us an insight into our president's character. A lot of this is many things we already suspected about President Trump, but to actually see that check and make that public and available, uh, that the president would sign that check while in office is pretty shocking. Well, you mentioned the check, and it's also about Trump's assets. Cohen also spoke about President Trump inflating his assets. Take a look at that. To your knowledge, did the president or his company ever inflate assets or revenues? Yes. And uh, was that done with the president's knowledge or direction? Everything was done with the knowledge and at the direction of Mr. Trump. Did the president ever provide inflated assets to a bank in order to help him ob obtain a loan? But you may answer that question. These documents and others were provided to Deutsche Bank uh, on one occasion where I was with them in our attempt to obtain money so that we can put a bid on the Buffalo Bills. All right, so Rick, we've, we've, we've heard that covered before in terms of inflating asset prices, but new details there. Yeah, and I think it's really important to say uh, how much of this is potentially criminal and how much is just salacious. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, he's hinting at something there which is potentially criminal, uh, which is um, Trump's dealing with banks. But look, I don't, I don't think it, it's necessarily unusual for a real estate developer to, uh, to perhaps exaggerate the value of assets. And by the way, Trump could come back and say, uh, you know, there's, you can't put a single number on, a, on real estate. It's illiquid. Uh, you know, we have one estimate. There are a dozen ways you can estimate the value of something. It's up to the bank to check. Uh, so uh, I don't, I'm not sure that's necessarily criminal, uh, criminal uh, or suggest criminality. Uh, and part, part of the point he was talking about there was he, these are the financial statements Trump used to validate his own net worth mm -hmm. so that he would go up higher in the billionaire rankings at Forbes. And he said that specifically. That was the main purpose of this. One other thing I think is really important and perhaps getting overlooked here, this was not in his written testimony. Uh, this name was not contained in his written testimony, but Cohen several times mentioned Alan Weisselberg, who is the chief financial uh, officer of the Trump, administ uh, Trump organization, the Trump's private company, and reportedly has received immunity from prosecutors for cooperating, for cooperating with them. So, he, so Cohen said uh, Weisselberg was in the room when Trump decided to write the check for $130,000 to Stormy Daniels. Cohen and Weisselberg back, went back to Weisselberg's office. Then they discuss among themselves, mm -hmm. how are we going to do this? Can we use your money? Well, I don't want to use my money. Can, how about your money? Can we use your money? And then, they, according to Cohen, they try to figure out, is there some front they could use, somebody who wants to throw a big party at one mm -hmm. of the things, so there, at one of the clubs, so there would be some cash flow that you could perhaps use to disguise the payment and stuff like that. That's not what ended up happening. It ended up being Michael Cohen's personal money. But uh, Alan Weisselberg is a key guy here because he probably knows even more than Michael Cohen does about Trump's business practices and what money is going where. And we've heard nothing from him except yeah. that we know that he's talking to prosecutors. A lot to go through. We'll let you get back to watching. And get I got to go. And, and dig into it, Rick <laughs> I might miss something. <laughs> get back to it. Thanks so much, Rick Newman, for joining us.